Hey guys, Majeffries here and welcome back to the city. Now we basically start in the exact same place as we started the last episode, but there are some subtle differences in the storage room now. And this is what this is going to be called. It's going to be called the storage room. This end is actually exactly the same. I don't know why I came this way. Um, I do need to... I'm going to dig out this wall actually. So I might as well do that on camera. I feel this would be an easier way to actually get across the tracks. So I think if I dig to about there and then dig this way, I should avoid all of the um, logistics pipes that are here. Oh, just. There we go. That's pretty cool. Quite happy with that. So we'll stick that there. We can also use this for more storage in the future. Is there a train arriving? I haven't seen a train for a little while actually. I'm starting to get a bit concerned about that. But here we are. Back in Old Faithful. And this is what's new. Look at this. You might remember in the end of last episode I said I was going to do some more storage solution. I have been doing that. I've been doing precisely that. And eventually this entire wall is going to go all the way up. Um, so again I'm going to have to do some digging. It's going to go all the way up, pretty much to just underneath the uh, the lowest level of the upper bank. What am I trying to say? Basically, the, the bottom floor of the bank, it's going to go right up to that. And this is... Oh, there's a train. They are still working. Thank God for that. Um, this is going to be an entire bank of these deep storage units. And barrels, I suppose, in some cases. Although here you can see... This is now redundant. In fact, a lot of these are redundant. Let's grab my dolly and move it this way. I've got some different types of redstone uh, red alloy cable on me as well, which I'll explain why I've got that in a second. There we go. Let's get those out of the way. Okay, so I did some jigging over here. So you'll see now that this uh, detector has been moved over a block. You can see where it used to reside. In fact, I can put a block on top of that now, can't I? That should still work, and then I can cover all this up again. I'll leave that one blank, because that's where the button is. But yeah, this uh, this train system now works fairly consistently, actually. I'm quite pleased with it. These should be full. They are. Fantastic. This is working nicely. So I've got to be careful what I clear out of my inventory here, because there are some things. Silver aluminium, tin, get rid of the cobblestone, granite, diorite, andesite, and then marble and limestone. They're all going to be used for the next lot of deep storage units, so I need to keep those basically where I can see them. Um, but yeah, I, used the, I was originally using insulated cable, and then I realised that that was actually pointless. I didn't need to use it at all, so I went back to just put a torch down here to stop things spawning. Um, so I'm back to using the normal redstone alloy. Or red red alloy, is that what it's called? But yeah, look, it works. The system seems to be working. This switches on and off quite nicely. As you can see the trains run quite nicely. And I feel confident of being able to connect more farms to this system now, which is exactly why I've been delaying doing that. Just to make sure that we've actually got a a sustainable, I did not want to fall down there, um, an actual sustainable system first before I went ahead and, and ended up building something that's more damaging than fixing. That train's going to head off. We, on the other hand, are going to head this way. These deep storage units are yet to be placed and there's a reason why I haven't placed them yet. That is because this one here I can get rid of as well. Um... I think there's another one somewhere around here that's empty. This one. Basically just going to pick up all the empty ones. These are all full, aren't they? Because I've already placed these. these is, this is what I've been doing off camera between episodes. It's going around and actually uh, filling all these up. I believe all these ones are full. There's no order to them at the moment. I'm going to have to sort that out as well. So I'm going to have like a building blocks. Actually, do I need that? No, I don't really. Because I'm not going to be coming down here looking for things. I'm going to be picking them out of the AE system. So I'm not too worried about that, to be quite honest. 
Um, I'm going to empty these out as well, actually. Literally going to empty out this barrel. Going to empty these out as well. Like so. Now I'm going to head over to this super chest. Can I reach it from here? Just. Get rid of all the stone. Get rid of all the limestone. I think I have a stone deep storage unit. I'm sure I used to. So I'll be amazed if I don't now. Uh, we'll pick up the rest of this crap. And yeah, just get rid of all this. Look at this, it's all stone. Ridiculous. So yeah, I'm just going to show you guys what I've been doing between episodes, basically, and how I've been sorting all this out. Then we're going to put these deep storage units in place. Uh, the other thing I want to do, actually, is show you how I am doing this storage system in the first place. Because I don't think I've shown you it on camera before. It's actually a very clever way of doing it. I can't remember whose video I watched to, to, to learn this trick. But it's a really cool trick. Um, and it means you can get six lots of deep storage units on a single channel of uh, an AE cable. So let's see. I have to go around the back to show you this. So you can see how it's done here. I might have shown you this. I'm trying to remember. I, d I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to stop trying to remember things now. Right, so you have these quartz fibers. These provide power to these systems. So that's all they're for, power. I'm also using them as cable anchors, you might have noticed here. Um, just because, I mean, they're relatively cheap to make and they look nicer. These are the important things here. You have an interface and a storage bus. Now, the way it works is the main network is connected to this, the interface and then the sub-network is connected to the storage bus. So in this case, there is a storage bus interface connection here. Is that even the right way around? Maybe it doesn't matter which way around it goes. But basically, that goes up to the main bank. And then all the rest are connected up like so. So you can see here, we've got the interface and the storage bus. Have I connected these up the right way? Oh no, sorry. Sorry. That's why I'm getting, getting it wrong. The storage bus is the one that's connected to the main network. So I think actually I've put these two the wrong way around. Yeah, I'm going to swap these two around really quickly. Uh, just give me a second whilst I do that. Okay, so I need the cable, and I need that, and I need that. Okay, so the storage bus is what is connected to the main network. So I'm going to do that first. Like this. And then the interface connects onto that, like so. And then that cable connects up. So actually, there could have been a whole load of stuff that we wouldn't have had access to then because of that. So, oops. But there you go. It's all fixed now. And as I said, this is going to be a whole wall of these deep storage units all the way up, which is why I dug a long way down in order to build this stuff. This whole area is going to eventually be filled by all different types of storage unit. Um, I'm also digging out this cavern because I think eventually I'm going to replace this unloading station here and have like a multi-platform unloading station. For all different types of, of item as well. Or for all different types of... Is commodity the right word? I suppose it could be. So you'll have an item drop-off. You'll have a liquid drop-off. And power, possibly. Because I know you've got power carts. But anyway, I'm wasting time running around doing this. I want to show you guys up here. So this is a deep storage unit. It's currently being filled up with abyssal stone. In fact, it's full abyssal stone so I can remove that one next on the list that's why I have this here silver ore I want to move all of my ores into deep storage because I know there's going to be loads of the stuff very very shortly arriving so that's that one done that's literally just because I had a free channel on this cable so I did that there the rest of them are all up on here on a separate cable so there's eight storage units, all connected to this one bit of the controller here. So this one is full up with feathers, so we can get rid of that now. We're going to replace it with 
Let's move that over here. I'm going to replace this one with aluminium. And it is aluminium. It's got an extra I in it. See? A-L-U-M-I-N. Actually, that says aluminium. I'm going to say aluminium. Because I'm British, and that's what we do. Uh, I didn't actually check if that one was full. Seeds. Yeah, I think the seed one was full. So this is going to be tin. Like so. And there. This one... Yep, it's full of egg. I'm glad we finally got somewhere for these eggs to go. Because, God, I hate eggs on this game. They just fly around everywhere. You can't walk two feet without picking up an egg at the moment on this server. It's ridiculous. I've got too many chickens. And there's one in the tunnel going towards City North. So every time I go through that tunnel to sort out problems with trains, I end up picking up like a stack of eggs. It's stupid. And the chicken doesn't move. It just sits there. And I'm pretty sure I've killed it about three or four times. And yet I still go down there and there it is, clucking away, dropping eggs everywhere. Right, that one's diorite, diorite, however you want to say it. I think I'm going to say diorite for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Right. Actually, there are a lot of these items where I could just use barrels. And I'm sure there's a few of you screaming at the, uh, at the video that why aren't you just using barrels. The reason is because this is eventually going to become the major hub. Every single item in the game at some point is going to pass through this building. So... Or was it 36,000 apples or something I had in that storage unit? That could easily rise to over a million in a very short space of time. And once you get to that stage, a barrel becomes pretty much obsolete. You have to start using multiple barrels. And that's what I found out when I was um, originally designing that storage room was things like bread, for example. I had, I think it was three barrels at one point um, storing bread and it's ridiculous you can fit all of that and more into one storage unit so I might as well just do that get it done nice and early so that for the rest of the game uh, it doesn't matter how many items you get of that type there's always going to be room for it in the bank there we go and then I'm going to take this one off I'm not going to replace it with anything just yet because I need to go back upstairs and see what the next bit, the uh, the next most common item is. Come on, jump up. There we go. Again, recording it slows this game down a fair bit. It doesn't show on the videos though, which I find quite frustrating because you're probably wondering why I'm apologising all the time for the slow. Or maybe it does. I don't know. Who knows? But you can see here everything is draining away quite nicely. Clay. I think that's the next one I'm going to do. I'm going to move these storage units over. I'm being very uh, pedantic about how I'm organising this, but it's it's for a very good reason. Snowballs, yes, we could do with one for that. Mushrooms, yes, because we're producing mushrooms on quite a large scale. Coal, we've already got one for. Spruce wood, we've already got one for as well, actually. I shouldn't have put that one back. Uh, graphite, no, because I'm going to be using lots of graphite. And again, these cobblestone ones I'm also not doing because I'm going to convert them back into normal cobblestone and normal stone. Um, do you know what? I think that's... Oh no, the ores. The rest of the ores. So copper. In fact, let's just type in ore. Um, copper, iron. What's that? Brown mushroom spores. Oh. O-R-E, yeah, I got it. Uh, ferrous, yes. Manor infused ore, where did that come from? I had no idea I even had that. Tin, am I already draining tin? Apparently not. Lead, oh, these are all the different types, aren't they? See, that's going to be quite frustrating as well. Maybe I won't do ores then. Maybe I won't. So, on that note, I'm going to have to go down here. So this was an ore one, wasn't it? Yes. Actually, that one's already empty. Blimey, that was quick. Maybe I will do ores. What are these? These are Tinker's Construct ones, aren't they? Let's 
maybe just do Tinker's Construct ores. I don't know. This one was the aluminium. That's also done. And this one was granite. Is this one done? You see how quickly these empty, though? It's amazing. Yeah, they're all empty. It's fantastic. The marble one is still going, but that's that's to be expected, really. There, we had a lot of marble. All right, mushroom. Stick this one in. So I can do that. Lock it in place. This one is going to be snowball. Stick that one in place. Like so. This one is going to be sapphire. Which apparently is a project red thing, which I never knew. Lock that one. And then this one is going to be clay. Uh, got to do this bit first. Clay especially is one we're going to have a lot of because we've got a sludge boiler. And clay is one of the uh, products of a sludge boiler. So it's always worth keeping an eye out for that. Now I need to hop over here and pick up the rest of these storage units. Which I believe I now have all of. And now it's just a case of going downstairs and, and putting all these on the wall. Now these are the most common ones. Now that I've done that, I think I can go back to using barrels again. So I don't think we're going to have any more items that are going to fill up. See, I think ores might do, but then ores can be processed. And I can have that set up to auto-process if there's too much of it. So it doesn't become a huge issue again. Uh, that one there like that and then one two three four then I'm gonna have to go up another level with this aren't I to get all the rest of these in it looks that way and one and two see I don't, I'm not quite liking the barrels there and I can fill these in one two three four I can fit five in which is annoying because there's six I know there's eight sat here. Okay, we are going to have to go up. So you do get to see how I build these. Um, first things first, we clear out an area. Why is that there? Do I have a wrench? Let's see if I can use that with a... Take that off with a wrench. Yes, I can. That makes life a little bit easier. Now you might notice that the uh, these levels here don't go quite as far over because the logistics pipes get in the way. That's probably going to be a recurring theme for this, I imagine. There'll be loads of logistic pipes and all sorts of things having to navigate a way around. Eventually, though, I would like to move the logistics pipes completely out of this system um, and put them elsewhere. I like logistics pipes. I'm a big fan of whoops logistics pipes. In fact, I've used logistics pipes over at uh, City North now. And again, I can't remember if I've actually shown you that on camera or not. But I've used them, and they, they're really cool. Where's the... There it is. Okay, so quartz fibre. We're literally going to go along like this and stick all the quartz fibre in. And we just do that all the way along like this. All the way along like this to the very end like so and then it's the storage bus comes first yes whoops alright storage bus first interface on top and then these Now, it's got power. You see it lights up. Um, now, this way, again, it's the storage bus first. So, again, I'm going to have to do... Am I missing one? I think I'm missing one. No, I'm not missing one. Why has this only got... 
Oh yeah, because it's six, not eight. Sorry guys, I'm having one of those moments again. You can tell I'm getting old. Right, stick those in like that. And then it's the storage bus first, and then the interface. Like so, and then again you connect it up. It's already got power because it connects to the one beneath. Uh, again, quartz fiber, like so. Storage first, interface second. Connect these ones up. Just like that. And then it's all these storage buses go on. So again, you see it, it all clicks in. It says four at the moment. Five, six, seven, and eight. And that creates the eight channels. But back downstairs, it only counts as one. So all these devices go online. I think it's a very clever system. It means you can have all these storage areas joined up. Just like that. And then if we dig our way out, so here. And then here. And then here. So that all works out nicely as well. I'm going to carry on digging in this direction a little bit. So I imagine we're going to get mob spawns again if I'm not careful. Like so. How much more room have I got? Loads of room. So I can pick up all these at the same time. Get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Should let me pick up all this cobblestone as well. Fantastic. Right, back up here. Put all these ones on. One, two, three, four. And as you can see, we've now got loads of room for even more. And as I said, we're going to have a whole wall of these barrels and deep storage units going all the way up to the bottom floor of the bank, which is just fantastic. Because if I go back up here now, and then go to the terminal, which I actually went the wrong way for. Shall I put this one on as well? Might as well. I might as well do one for all the ores then. Even if I just do barrels. At least it gets them all out of the system. Because I do want to get everything out of the system as much as possible. So fly up here like so. Go into the terminal. And then everything should appear again. Yes. Rubber saplings. Sandstone. Gunpowder. These are all the ones that I did off camera. But... If I go and show you the storage drives, and in fact this here is a very good example, these should all be relatively empty. I would have to run these through that I.O. drive. Is that I.O. drive? I can't remember exactly what it's called. Uh, I.O. port, that's what they're called. So let me take off how many channels have I got left on this? Three. Okay. So I can do it. I should be able to pop this here. Transfer data to network. Yep. That's what we want to do. And then we just want to empty out. Let's put all this in a chest first. So I want to keep my crowbar and I want to keep my wrench. Everything else back in the system. Can I clear it out like that? I can. Look at that. Very nice. And then I can stick all these in like so. Um, I have an idea. Let me get a chest. In fact, let me just get an import bus. and a cable
like that. Because I believe these are all 64k. So I should just be able to put this here like that. Grab one of these. Stick it in there like that. And then connect this up like that. And that should pull these out. Once I'm finished with them, which it does. Bravo. Now I could just go through and empty all these drives. So I literally just go around filling all these. Come on. Don't tell. Oh, that one was full. If that one was full, then why was it... Oh, because it was only four types. But even so, that should have changed to amber. I think it's the colour they turn. Of course, one thing I'm not taking into account is these are probably getting filled up by the items that are currently being taken out of the old ones. don't think I thought that one entirely through. I could also put some acceleration cards here. Is it worth it? We can find out. Just looking at these ones as well. Can I empty these ones? Somewhere. And I think actually it's on this one. At the very top. Yeah. Look at that one. 16,384k storage. So, if you don't know what that is, that's 1.63 million. No, it's not 1.63 million, it's 16 million. Sorry, 16 million. Even bigger, when you look at it like that. Lots and lots of items. And I'm going to try and get uh, these drives here full of those. Or at least a few of them full of those. And that will be for all excess stuff that doesn't go into barrels and storage units. And the reason I've put them here is because they connect straight to the controller. They don't connect to these cables. Which means that these cables then actually become free. You can use them for other things. Alright, that's now empty. Cool. So again, we just skip along. Shift left click on all of these. Like so. This is a very nifty little system I've got here. I think the favourite system I had was when I moved everything from the tower over here. I can't remember if I... I think I did show you that on the Minecraft Opolis episode. I had an ender chest uh, linking an IO port at the tower that was loading up these. And then an IO port here that was emptying these. And it was just an automated system. The empty ones were being transported back to the tower to be filled up, and the full ones were being transported here to be emptied. And it worked. I like building complex things that work. Don't like building complex things that don't work. But then who does? Right. So these are, barring these two, empty. Which is very good news for me. Now it means I can grab my pickaxe and destroy them. And these should free up eight channels on this cable. There you go, 21 now. It was 29. But I think it went up to 30. I've only got six ME drives back. Where did the other two go? I don't know where the other two went. That's a little bit worrying. Did they fall through there? They might have fallen through there. Fooled? Fallen through there. In which case I'm not going to try and retrieve them. But I can also come through here, empty this out, and then get rid of these ones too. Now this bit here is important because you see we've got these molecular assemblers and they're pretty much full. You can see these ones are actually crafting compressed cobblestone for us. Um, but they are pretty much full. And then we've got our mob spawners directly behind. But these, I don't think... These don't even have power. Never mind. Oh dear, that's not good. 
I'll have to fix that in a second. I think that's because we've run out of bread. Um, so I need to actually check if we've got a recipe for bread. I'm not sure if we have. So let me do that. If I look up wheat... Yeah, we don't have... Uh, let's look up wheat on here as well. So I believe wheat flour, you can shape it like that, but if you pulverise it... No? I thought there was one you could pulverise and it creates more. Maybe not. I could be wrong. So in that case, we will take that. And then... Right, let's craft a stack of that. A stack of that. Really? It's not going to let me craft a stack of it. No. One at a time. Well, that's good. Thank you, game. That's brilliant. So let's just go down here. We are going to end up with lots of bread again in the system because of this. In fact, there's one. I don't want to create compressed cobblestone anymore in this system because that's all being done elsewhere now. Plus I haven't got the processing power here to do it. I don't think you can have um, it be auto crafted like this. I don't think you'll ever have enough processing power. Which again is, is frustrating but it might just be I wasn't building the, uh, the co-processors properly. That's always a possibility when I'm building things on here. Uh, so we now want wheat flour which, which I've got on me here. Stick that there, do that. Furnace behind me should still have coal in, it has. Fantastic. So one wheat flour should make one bread if I've done my maths right. Might make more than one bread actually which would be brilliant. No, one bread. Okay. Fine, one bread it is. So I'll put that there. Let's get rid of these, because I don't need these anymore. Get rid of that. Create this pattern. And somewhere, I've got the one that turns bread into toast. Here, redstone furnace. We're going to put these in the same one. So now, if I come down here, this thing should be cooking up bread for us. There it goes. And then once it's cooked up bread, it should start cooking up toast. Just going to wait and see if that's actually working or not. And then if it is working, then we have ourselves a lovely working system again. I might turn this into um, a resonant one so I can have the speed upgrades on it as well. But that's why we have no power over at our mob spawner now because these down here are our generators culinary generators and as you can see they are empty and this capacitor bank is also empty which means all of this is guess what actually this has got stuff in why is that not oh is it because we haven't got any yeah we haven't got any essence that's another problem that I'm going to fix probably off camera but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do now so that it's not a surprise to you. Basically I'm going to cut these walls away and I'm going to put a, a similar setup here but instead of having the spawners I'm just going to use cursed earth and a grinder. So it's basically going to be an essence farm. But look at that. These are starting to fill up with energy now which is brilliant. This one should be filling up as well. Yep. And in fact are there mobs in there? Yeah there are. So our, our entire mob farm had actually shut down. Which, you know, that actually explains quite a lot. We are having power issues. You see, we're having power issues. And that might be because, again, off camera, I put in the wiring system. I used cobblestone and relays, make it look like pylons. You can see they run all the way along through the river, up through the village, which again was a bit difficult. I might reroute it through the village, because at the time I was sort of improvising. But they run over to City North. And in fact, if I go over to City North, just to end today's episode, because we are 
overrunning slightly. Are there any trains? Not that I can see. You can see where the wire goes anyway. It does a little bit of a weird to and fro through these buildings so it climbs up the mountain. And then here it sort of goes along a bit, down a bit, along a bit again. And then we come over to here where you see we have this logistics network. And actually this logistics network is running a lot faster now than it was before. It was running very slow before. I wonder if this means we're crafting these faster now. I wouldn't have thought so. Basically what we have here, it's empty now but at the time it was full. Um, instead of using the item ducts, we now have a logistics pipe set up. So the, the cobblestone gets pulled out here and gets chucked into any of these cyclic assemblers of which there are half of what they used to be. Because again, I uh, ran into a few problems over here. Once they've been turned into compressed cobblestone, they get pumped out along here into this barrel, which is then pumped up into this here and turned into double compressed and so on and so forth. This section is actually slower, and this is the bit that I found quite frustrating, is the, the logistics pipes themselves move the items faster, but the cyclic assemblers don't seem to be getting as much. So it's a real confusion as to how that's the case, but... I don't know. I don't know. Right, this isn't working very well either. Why is this not working? This is connected, isn't it? It's got power. No, it hasn't got power. That would be the problem then, wouldn't it? I have a feeling... I don't think our sludge boiler's got power either. So that's why this farm is running so slow, because it's hardly got any power. Um, my solution to that would be... Yeah, my solution would be get rid of this. And have this windmill solely powering the farm. Or basically have... Hang on, I've got to try and fix this again now. Which I should be able to do. Can I connect that to that? What about that to that? Yes. There we go. So this should be getting power again. Should be getting more power. Yeah, it fluctuates. It's not brilliant. But these trees should be getting cut down. This is a problem we are going to have to fix before we start building all our other farms. Yeah, you can see it's doing its job. Basically, I don't want these trains waiting here for ages to fill up. Because this is the spruce stop now. It's going to have cobblestone as well, but mostly spruce. What's tr what tree is this? Sakura. Hmm. Might have to make a farm of that as well. Might have to make a farm of that. But you can definitely see over here, our cobble farm is working better than it was, let's say. The reason this barrel is here, though, and I should have said this before, actually, is because for some reason, if I have... Uh, wrong side. God, I don't like this jetpack. I might go back to my old one. I have these suppliers here, and they're, they're providing 64 cobblestone per... Although it's set to infinite, so it's never going to run out, basically. But it's 64, let's say, to these cyclic assemblers each time. But even then, you can see that there's a lot of... sort of toing and fro -ing. Not many actually get pumped up into there. But, you know, it's fine. It's a working system. But if I try to do that with this, if I try and have 64 uh, compressed cobblestone put into here... They just got stuck on the provider pipes and eventually just got spewed out all over the place. So I should have taken a screenshot actually because I had like, I think it was 200 stacks of compressed cobblestone just spewed out all over this area. And it was very, very messy indeed. So now, as you can see, I've gone for this more uh, structured approach. It goes into the barrel first to act as a buffer. And then it gets pulled up into the machine. But it doesn't run very fast. And I find that very, very frustrating. Because I think we're actually getting less cobblestone process now than we were before. This barrel is nearly always full. So I can either double up the number of cyclic assemblers. Or I can revert to using the normal item ducts for this top section. 
Either way, it's very, very annoying. Something else I could do, of course, is go back underneath down here like this. Uh, and again, I've got to dig myself a tunnel. All these little sub-tunnels and stuff I've had to dig to get around these areas. And then if I just add more stacks... Why is that only produce one? There we go. See, that might actually pump more in per per tick. Same here. Each one of these supplier pipes provides two machines as well, which could also be why it's not running as fast. But if we have, what is this, nine stacks of cobblestone going into each machine each time, that's a whole stack of compressed cobblestone per cycle which is you know probably over nine times more than we've currently got so actually this is probably a good solution but we are going to need buffers we're going to need faster cobblestone production which I'm tempted to use igneous extruders for um, to create cobblestone that way if I've got the power for it I'm not sure if they actually need power or not but these cyclic assemblers they are a bit slow and in the future, I'd like to start experimenting with uh, scrap as well. So even more reason to actually get this whoops, get this running properly. So when we start using um, recyclers, we have loads of cobblestone that we can chuck into it. Now, does that make it run faster at all, or have I just botched it? Might have botched it. Chuck those in there for a second. See, that's not processing very fast either. Is this emptying quicker? Not really. Well, maybe really. I think it's stable actually. I think it's pretty much stable. It goes down and then just as it nears the bottom it jumps up again. So if that stays that like that, that's perfect. Train dispatch seems to be fairly um, consistent as well, which is, whoops, which is good. Is this working? It is. Chuck that and that in there. Again, bloody chicken. Go away. I hate chickens. Very annoying. Uh, I think I've slowed down our um, quarry doing this. Definitely looks like I have. Which again is is not very good. I keep bodging things. Not ideal. What's our power situation like here? Bad. This is actually getting power from the main system. It's coming in via these wires, but you know, it's, it can carry up to 4,000 RF per tick, but it isn't carrying 4,000 RF per tick. And I don't know whether that's because these relays can't carry as much, or whether it's just the wire isn't being provided with enough. Is this going faster? That's what I want to know. That looks faster. But this doesn't seem to be collecting cobble any faster. Yeah, if anything, that's running slower. Hmm. One thing I could do, and I had this before, was if I cut this one off, then we have... I cut this one off. Then we have half the assemblers being provided by one barrel. That's not going to work, is it? Because these haven't got power then. Okay, I'm going to have to connect this up again. Then it would have been one half connected by one barrel and the other half connected by the other barrel. But as you can see, that doesn't actually work properly. So it is quite a slow system because it fills these up with a stack. But then it also fills these up with a stack. And then it has to go along and fill these ones up with a stack. And it doesn't seem to go fast enough. So if anyone out there is watching this and knows how to speed up logistics pipes... Please let me know, because I would very much like to get this whoops working. It's something to do with this. There must be a speed upgrade that I can put on this, just to make it run faster. Because it's spewing out plenty of cobblestone, but it's just not getting to the assemblers quick enough. Which, you know, frustrating. Very frustrating. Anyway, I think I've wasted enough time yapping about this. So I'm going to end the episode here then, guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. 
If you have already subscribed to my channel, thank you guys for your continued support. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and of course if you're enjoying the series. And until next time, I'll see you soon.